Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So quite some time ago I made a video on the Ant SDR E200 and I knew it would only be a matter of time until someone developed some rather cool firmware. Now the Ant SDR E200 is a software defined radio that can transmit as well as receive up to 6 GHz with a max bandwidth of 56 MHz. Now the firmware that I'll show you today is this which is a DJI drone ID detection application, which runs solely on the E200, meaning you do not need any further software to demodulate or decode these transmissions, which are sent from DJI drones. Of course, you will need an application to view the data, but you can use any serial terminal application you like. And in my case, I'll be using Putty as it's free on Windows. Now this website shows exactly how to install the firmware and get it running and it's extremely easy to do. So let's go ahead and get it installed. So first we will need to download the firmware from the link on this website. Once downloaded, uncompress the file and then copy the files to a FAT32 formatted micro SD card. Now the E200 will use this SD card as its boot drive, running the application directly from the SD card within the E200 itself. Now DJI drones transmit on both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. So having a dual band antenna to receive will be an advantage. But for my tests, I'll just connect the E200 receiver port to my outside VHF UHF antenna, just for testing locally. Now the E200 connects to my computer via a USB cable, which then provides a virtual COM port on the Windows computer. I then use an application called Putty to open a serial connection on that virtual COM port and make sure the board rate is set to 115200. Now once connected, you'll see an output on the terminal window like this. And once DJI drone ID frames are detected and decoded, they'll be shown on the screen here. So let's head outside and fly the drone. Now incidentally, I have a DJI Mini 4 Pro and I'll not fly it too far away because I'm not sure how well the antenna I'm using will receive on 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. Now, as you can see here, as I'm flying the drone, data is appearing on the window. That's that little small black window on the top left of the screen you can see now. Now, it was a rather windy day when I was recording this footage, so I didn't really venture too high or too far away. In fact, the controller kept issuing a warning saying to land as soon as possible due to high winds. As you can see though, as I move the drone up higher and further away, more packets have been decoded and shown on that little top left window. Now I must warn you that this software is purely for testing purposes only, and in its current state, it could still have bugs and issues, meaning that some data may not be correct, but it's a start in the right direction for creating a standalone solution like this. Now what's fascinating about this project is that all of the work is performed on the E200 itself, with the data being outputted on a virtual serial port. Now creating a data parser and a mapping application would actually not be too difficult to do, even with the current firmware. So who knows, in the future we could have a complete solution where we just leave it running like we do with ADSB, and then plot drones on a map instead of aircraft. Now, for those interested in what data is printed onto the terminal window and how it's formatted, well, this is how it currently looks. The data in this snippet is obviously false data, but you get the idea of what fields are available. Now, the only thing missing here is a unique identifier, which I'm pretty sure can be decoded as well. Just not sure why it's not in the data fields here. Now notice how there are three pairs of GPS coordinates, the drone location, the drone's home location, and then the GPS coordinates of the pilot, i.e. the person that's actually holding the controller. Now other information such as altitude and height is also present in that data. Now while I was initially setting up this firmware to test for the first time, I was surprised to pick up some drone transmissions from someone else. And after looking into the data more closely and checking the GPS coordinates on a map, the drone and pilot was over three kilometers away. So who knows how far this will reach with a dedicated and properly tuned receiving antenna 
for 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. Of course, this particular solution, you will need a microphase and SDR E200. And if you want to purchase one of these, I'll leave a link down in the description below, along with a link to where you can download the firmware from. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video interesting. If you're new here, please feel free to subscribe. It's free to do and you'll be notified of when I next upload videos. If you're here because you're a regular viewer, then it's nice to have you back. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.